Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Mike Szymanski. Mike is the head waterfowl biologist with Game and Fish. We're going to talk about the spring snow goose season that is uh, currently underway. Um, actually, Mike, it's not a season, it's a, or a conservation season. That's right, Tom. Technically, it's a conservation order that uh, goes in place. It allows a bunch of extra measures that can be used uh, outside of regular hunting season. So it's not counting towards our migratory bird treating days that we use uh, during our hunting seasons, determining how long we can hunt, and then also the kind of inside and outside dates that allow us to have uh, hunting opportunities. It was implemented as a way to thin out the snow geese. Uh, why do they need thinning? Sure, we started, um, I think the original intent was to really try to reduce the population and uh, over time we've realized how uh, resilient these birds are, how hard they are to harvest, uh, how high their survival rates are as we've gained more and more information over time. Um, so reducing the population with this order is probably not very likely. However, we are doing a, a better job at stabilizing the growth of the population, which was very important because they were, the population was growing very, very quickly, very, well, in, in a very large way. I mean, there are a lot of snow geese. They're destroying their breeding grounds, aren't they? Yeah, there's, there's concerns over uh, impacts to tundra habitats. Uh, it can take a long time for those places to recover just because of how the growing seasons are and the types of plants that are being denuded. Um, there's also concerns for disease transmission when you have that many birds in one place. And then you get into other uh, little uh, situational uh, issues with uh, how much food is being consumed by, um, you know, a quarter million geese descending in one spot and hanging out there for a little while. And then you've got all kinds of other geese and cranes and ducks that may need to use those same places for foraging. Seems kind of weird to have a hunting season that starts in the middle of February and runs through the middle of May. Why right. such a long season and why the, the parameters? Yeah, uh, so like I mentioned earlier, it's not, uh, it's not confined to our migratory bird treaty days, so we can have as many days as we want in the conservation order. And the joke, Tom, uh, as we've talked about many times, is that we, we, we get it rolling in February sort of just in case. We're, we're not usually expecting people to have hunting opportunities in February, <laughs> but we figure, well, we'll toss them out there. It's no penalty to us, but there, there this year are actually a few birds around. Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the, the true beginning of our three-week window that we usually have for migration, but uh, some geese have shown up in the state. And, um, you know, I was checking to make sure we had news releases out announcing that the season was opening on the 18th and mm -hmm. not any earlier than that because I know some states further south had issues where people were hunting actually before their conservation order Right, opened. it's been such a weird year for yeah. weather. We had all of that snow in December. People were saying, you know, this isn't gonna go away until June. Yeah. But now we've had a very nice January, very nice February so far. And as you mentioned, there are geese currently in North Dakota already. Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a weird perspective depending on where you are in the state because those of us in the central part of the state probably we'll see some snow drifts and trees in, in early June, but uh, you know, further east and west, there was quite a bit less snow. Um, uh, that warm snap we had, we, we obviously got on the other side of the, the line that made us have great weather instead of terrible winter weather, and uh, a lot of snow went away. So right. we've got a large part of the eastern state already that doesn't have snow. Uh, there's a lot of winter left, I mean, we can certainly have a whole bunch show up in a hurry, but. Well, I know the southern part of South Dakota now is looking at a fairly major storm that's gonna go through there. Yeah. What happens when the northern part of the, the actual migration is almost into North Dakota? They're gonna have this snow behind them. They're gonna have a snow line in front of them and things. They bounce back and forth, I would guess. They jockey around a little bit. Um, a lot of times they hunker down too, just if it's, if it's gonna be tough for a couple of days, they can handle that. Um, but yeah, they've, they've got, they're, they're moving a lot on a daily basis anyways, so, you know, a couple mile, a couple hundred miles up and down, back and forth, really isn't a big deal to them. Right. Do they follow the same flight path in the spring as they do during the summer, or during the uh, fall? Um, 
No, it's, it's typically further east in the spring. Uh, in the fall, they're coming down more in the western and central part of the state. In the spring, they really come up through the eastern side. They're coming from further east generally. Um, a lot of it is, you know, I usually describe it as kind of that James River Lowlands corridor when they mm -hmm. hit uh, about the interstate then kind of all bets are off on, on which way the, the birds that you're following might go. Uh, they've, they've got some decisions to make as to whether or not they want to keep going straight north or maybe pitch it over to the northwest. People use different techniques to hunt spring snow goose than they do uh, hunting in the fall or if they go to Saskatchewan or Manitoba. It's a, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot of the same techniques, just employed slightly differently. There's a lot of, um, a lot more consideration, I guess, into how you're going to get into a field in North Dakota for uh, setting up a decoy spread, things like that. There's a lot more equipment involved, um, a lot bigger spreads. Um, it's a little bit harder to get you know, where you need to go too, because there's ice on wetlands and things like that, so. Sure. I would guess people would have to be cognizant of farmer's fields. Right. You're not gonna wanna drive a huge trailer out in the middle of there. There's gonna be mud and water. It's, and it's more than likely gonna be impossible to do it. Um, and if you can drive out there, there's probably gonna be a place that you shouldn't drive within that field. So we really discourage people heading out in the fields with large, uh, large rigs or even their pickup trucks unless they have very specific understandings with landowners or, or really good knowledge of the, the field that they're going into. There are quite a few uh, liberalized regulations, if you want to call them that, for spring season as opposed to fall. Sure, Tom. We have some special considerations for um, hunting snow geese in the spring. Uh, one of those is hunting at half an hour after sunset. Um, but the bigger ones that are more, more commonly used are uh, getting out there with electronic calls and then also uh, unplugged shotguns. That's to maximize the, the harvest, I guess. Yeah, uh, people get a, a lot of birds in front of them sometimes, especially using those electronic calls and, and it just helps kind of um, finish out the, the approach, I guess you could say. Right, I guess this time of year there's no telling when or where there's going to be birds in the state, but there are now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard to know for sure how it's all gonna play out. It's really important that if people are considering going out that they get their HIP registrations done because everybody needs to have a new uh, HIP registration for the 2017 season that's gonna be hunting spring snow geese. Right. And then that'll carry into the fall too if, if folks are gonna use that, uh, uh, if they're gonna be hunting uh, waterfowl in the fall. It's gonna be interesting. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Tom. Here are the licensing requirements for the spring snow goose conservation season. Residents must have a valid current season 2016-17 license, which is valid through March 31st, or a 2017-18 combination license, or a small game and general game and habitat license after April 1st. Those are available to residents on March 15th. Non-residents need a 2017 spring light goose season license. The cost is $50 and the license is good statewide. Non-residents who hunt the spring season can still buy a fall season license also. The spring season does not count against the 14-day fall waterfowl hunting season regulations. A federal waterfowl duck stamp is not required for either residents or non-residents. For Mike Szymanski and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.